Hello community! Today we combine our vision transformer knowledge and our LLM knowledge. So we have vision and language. And today I show you that there is a beautiful technique that we can now pre-train vision language models based on the transformer architecture. And here we go. This beauty is called Blip2. Bootstrapping, language image, pre-training with frozen image encoders and LLMs. This is exactly what we wanted. Interestingly here, as you can see here, the authors, and it is from Salesforce Research, published January 30, 2023. Let's just jump right into it. And you might ask, but what is the use case for this technology? So, if I upload a thumbnail of one of my last videos, let's have a look. And we have here our chat input question. What elements can you distinguish here on this picture? And the answer is processing a helicopter, a green screen, and the words vision transformer. Now, image to text task that visual language models can tackle are image captioning for the visually impaired create useful product description, identify inappropriate content beyond the text. Then you have image text retrieval can be applied in multimodal search as well as autonomous driving. And you have, of course, visual question answering what we are interested in. And this will enable our multimodal, our chat GPT chatbots now, multimodal, yippee, here we go. So at first we have to make sure and this is now kind of a culmination of what we learned, the transformer architecture here on our large language models that I showed you, uh, T5, Flan T5, Bloom, everything here that you know, either the decoder side or the encoder side. And of course now vision transformers, both have the same architecture. This is the most important point here. Both are transformer architectures. So we compare Apple to Apple and you're not going to believe it to bridge this modality gap as they call it between vision here on this side and language on this side. They add now a transformer. Now isn't this a surprise? So we have a transformer that connects to a transformer and connects to another transformer. And we will know that our technique is absolutely compatible crossover. So. This transformer we call a query transformer. You will understand in a second why this is. Or a Q-former. So whenever you will read now in February, March 2023, starting that about Q-former, you know exactly what we're talking about, the interface of vision transformer to language transformers. If you want to know more about LLM, I'll show you here about how you can use your Flan T5 XXL or if you're interested to have your Bloom 176 billion parameter model operational on the AWS infrastructure, those are my two videos for you. If you want to learn in general about Transformer, this is my video. And one of my latest videos on Vision Transformers are here on the left side. So, beautiful. Now, we are of course interested, the main problem is an LLM is already a huge model. A vision transformer is also not as huge, but coming up to 22 billion parameter. My goodness, these are monsters. So if you want to combine them, how do you want to train if this hardly fits in a supercomputer center? So this is now the beautiful idea here of the authors of this paper. And please have a look at the original paper that they say now we freeze the vision transformer and we freeze completely all layers of an LLM. Yes, we have an interface between those. We have an open I.O. channel to these models, but the layers and the weights are frozen. The only thing that we will train is between the frozen vision transform and the frozen LLM, like ChatGPT or whatever U.com chat or whatever GPT-3 based methodologies you like to apply or Flan T5 or whatever. The only object we train here is our Q transformer, our Q former, our querying transformer. This is the hot topic. So how we do this? Now, 
you're not going to believe it, since on the one side we have a vision object and on the right side we have a language object, the Qformer itself has two modules. It has an image object, an image transformer, that interacts with the frozen image encoder for the visual feature extraction. And on the other side it has also a text transformer that can function both as an encoder or a decoder for language. So you see, more or less, we copy the external I.O. structure that it will attach itself on and we put some sub-modules within our Q transformer. And yes, you guessed it, we will have common self-attention layers within our Q former. So if you want to have it in a little bit more detail, this is the query for you. You see here, to initialize our Q former, we use the weights from a bird base model. You might say, my goodness, the simple bird base model. Yes, exactly. Now it all comes together. We combine now the vision technology with language technology. Bird as bird sentence transformer. This is it. Can you describe the elements in the image? Now this is gonna be fun. So let's have a look. A fighter jet flying in the sky with the words Q&A on ChatGPT. Absolutely right. You identify the fighter plane. Okay, now, which fighter plane? F-35. Gee, not bad, not bad, the F-35. So how does the pre-training happen? Two stages. In the first stage now, the vision language representation learning stage, as we call it, we connect now our Q-former that sits in the middle, now with the frozen image encoder. So only with one side with our image encoder, and perform the pre-training using some very specific image text pairs. So you have an image and you have a text description of the contents of this image. You have another image, another content description in text of the content of this image. And you get it. You have the loss function and they found out the best way to do this is have three different loss function. When you train it here on the first stage, you have an image text contrasting loss like we have and the normal bird systems also trained on. Then you have an image rounded text generation and an image text matching loss. All the details you find in their original research paper. Just to give you an idea, we have here in, let's call it yellow, this something occur monster here. And we dock here our Q former in the very first pre training step here to our image encoder that is frozen. So, image, image encoder, and here it is. And now we have here, as I told you, two modules within our Qformer, an image transformer and a language transformer. Now you have now on the self-attention layer, you have sharing. And this is more or less the main idea behind this. If you want to have the text, image transformer extracts a fixed number of output features from the image encoder independent of the of the image resolution of course and receives learnable query embeddings as an input this here is our input i will show you in a second and then it runs through we have here our attention masking it be able to calculate our three different losses our three different methods and you have here beautiful described here how with the self-attention mechanism now we're working here across the modules now you might say, okay, and the second step? Well, the second step, you're not going to believe it. Now we take the queue format that sits in the middle and connect it to the other part, to the vision language generative learning, where we're connected now to the frozen LLM. In our case, it will be a FLAN T5 XXL model. Now, the query embeddings that we get out now have the relevant visual information to the text as it passes through an information bottleneck and these embeddings are now used as a visual prefix. And I'll show you in a second what I mean to the input to the large language model. 
And this pre-training phase effectively involves an image ground text generation task using causal language model loss. Let's have a visualization of this. Now, the people that wrote the research paper decided to have two different models, two different LLMs. Here, for example, you have here only, only if you want a decoder-based LLM, but you know, if we're working with Flan T5, we have a full transformer stack. So we have an encoder stack and a decoder stack. So of course, and we're gonna use the second option here, Flan T5. So we have here our input image that comes in, our image encoder that is frozen. Then the first step is now done. We have now the output here of our queue former. And this here is runs now through a fully connected layer to linearly project the output query embedding Z into the same dimension as now the text embedding for the LLM. And this is the beauty. Of course, if you only have a decoder, it goes directly. If you have to feed an encoder and a decoder stack, you have to take care about this. They function here as a soft visual prompt and condition this on presentation extracted by the queue former. Yes, the details you find in the paper. I just want that you have an understanding to process. First one, it goes in the queue former. You got it. You have a fully connected layer input to the LLM. And here now, then the next word generation, the generative AI takes place. Now, the absolute beauty of this methodology here from the last day of January 2023 was that when they published BLIP2, they used the vision transformer. And for the large language model, as I showed you, you can use the Flan T5 model. But you are not restricted to this. This pre-training approach, since you freeze both vision models and the language models, you both freeze them, you can combine almost any visual backbone with any large language model for this specific vision language model development where you can train here this queue former. So we get a complete pre-trained vision language model out of the pipeline. Now you might say, isn't that beautiful? And I agree with you, but you know what? This was the theory, so you understand what we're gonna code next time when we will code every single step. We will build our own app, maybe we even do a Gradio, and we will end up with an operational vision language transformer model. You can use, you can apply, so when you have an image, you use the image as an input, and then you can start to jet and the system automatically understands the content of the image and will respond to you in this chat correspondingly. I say thank you. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. See you in my next video.